Hello there. Welcome once again to this class brought to you by O3 Schools Jam app. The only app you need to prepare for your jam examinations. Now, um, keep in mind to activate this app to enjoy its full usefulness, cost you the sum of 2,500 Naira. Activating it is quite simple. Simply follow the steps as you shall see in the app and you shall gain access to all the features of this app. And without further ado, Let's lead in to our topic for today. We shall be studying temperature and its measurements. Temperature and its measurements. Um, to start off, quite simply, as we should know, what is temperature? In a man's terms, temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. But on a molecular level, we can look at temperature as a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a body. The measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules which makes up that body, that's temperature. And the instrument we use to measure temperature is the thermometer. Now, the thermometer comes in many types and forms. Some of the most common ones we have are the liquid in glass thermometers, liquid in glass thermometer. This liquid in glass thermometer measures the change in the volume of a liquid with temperature. So all you simply have inside is a liquid and as temperature changes, this liquid expands. Now every thermometer has a certain material whose property is going to be changing with temperature such that it can detect when temperature changes. This material is referred to as a thermoelectric material a thermoelectric material and in this case our thermoelectric material or sorry not thermoelectric thermometric thermometric do not mind me thermometric material and the thermometric material for liquid in glass thermometer is usually either alcohol or mercury other than liquid in glass we also have gas thermometers. Gas thermometers simply make use of any gas and they measure the change in the pressure of this gas at constant volume. There are others. So you have your bimetallic strip. You also have thermocouple. And you also have resistance thermometer. Resistance thermometer. Measures the change in the resistance with temperature. Um, your thermocouple measures the change in potential difference with the junction between two dissimilar metals. Why bimetallic thermometers to measure temperatures due to the difference in the expansion of two dissimilar metals. So these are types of thermometers. However, in the course of the syllabus, we are meant to focus more on the liquid in glass thermometer. The liquid in glass thermometer is quite special, as we said, it makes it up either alcohol or mercury. However, I may say, what are the qualities that makes me know this thermometer is making use of a good thermometric material? Or in this case, it's usually a thermometric liquid. Now, one of the important things we look at for in making our decision is that this material must have uniform expansion. That means the expansion as temperature changes ought to be uniform. It could increase by maybe two centimeter cube for every degree rise in temperature. That would be constant. That would be uniform, making it easy for us to calibrate this thermometer. Then also, a good thermometric liquid must be visible through the glass. Must be visible through the glass. That means I should be able to see it easily. Now, Alcohol has a little bit of a defect there. Alcohol is rather translucent, but for that reason, a bit of coloring is usually added to make alcohol suitable because its other advantages will outweigh this slight disadvantage. Then it must also have high expansivity. Now, what this implies is that if my thermometric liquid doesn't expand sufficiently with the change in temperature, they don't be able to actually measure anything. If this, if this liquid has to maybe undergo a change of 10 degrees Celsius before any noticeable change occurs, 
my thermometer becomes rather useless because i'm able to measure any change going on between that one to nine until it gets to 10. so it must have high expansivity now that there is also the question if i'm using a liquid as a human our first thought is always water if i'm using a liquid why not water well first of all one is because water wets glass therefore water wouldn't work quite fine for thermometer two water is also transparent that is colorless so we can see through water which makes it rather difficult to use in a thermometer and then also water doesn't undergo even expansion and in this case we refer to the anomalous expansion of water then also water has a high freezing point and a low melting point sorry for obstructing you just a bit here high freezing point and the low melting point what this indicates is as you are aware under standard pressure water freezes at zero degrees celsius and boils at sorry this should be low boiling point and boils at 100 degrees celsius as a result of that it means that once you measure anything below zero instead of having liquid in glass you'll be having solids in your thermometer which makes it automatically useless and once you're trying to measure anything above 100 you would then be having gas in your thermometer which makes it again useless for a liquid in glass thermometer and for that reason we do not use water now on deciding what type of thermometer you are going to use before making your choice no you know use water you also have to decide okay where do i use alcohol and where do i use mercury or can i just use them nearly really the question then becomes to decide you must ask yourself what i'm measuring how high is the temperature or how low mercury has a rather high freezing point therefore it's easy for mercury to turn into a solid so do not use mercury to measure very low temperatures but alcohol can be used to measure low temperatures on the other hand alcohol can boil rather easily so do not use it to measure high temperatures why mercury can be used to measure those high temperatures and so far we're talking about measuring this temperature measuring this temperature when we measure this temperature what is our units now as a nigerian common unit to be aware of is degree celsius but as you should be aware the si unit for temperature is kelvin key kelvin is also known as the absolute scale of temperature absolute scale so in this topic we'll notice that the lowest value that the material can freeze to is zero kelvin this is not okay this is zero kelvin that is the lowest value kelvin is the absolute scale then we also have another scale which is your fahrenheit scale then there are a few others but these are the most common ones to look at there's also rank kind or do not deal with that at this level we we'll focus purely on degrees Celsius, Kelvin, and Fahrenheit. Now, when using these different things, if you have to convert from one to the other, how do you go through with your conversion? All you have to look at when trying to convert is we have two things we look at. Number one is the upper fixed point, upper fixed point, and the second is the lower fixed point. Now, what we say is what do we mean? The upper fixed point is the temperature at which pure water boils under standard pressure. While the lower fixed point is the temperature at which pure ice melts at also standard pressure. Now, um, commonly, we must have learned this in primary school, pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius while it freezes at zero degrees celsius but if we take a look at our kelvin scale it is not the same value in kelvin scale 
pure water boils at 373 kelvin and freezes at 273 kelvin then in degree fahrenheit pure water boils at 212 degree fahrenheit and freezes at 32 degrees fahrenheit now these values ought to be committed to memory because in questions you have to apply them there's also one more thing not as important but we should probably know it as well it is known as the fundamental interval this interval is simply what you get when you subtract these temperatures for example upper minus zero here, 100 minus zero is 100 degrees celsius 373 minus 273 is 100 kelvin and 212 minus 32 is 180 degrees fahrenheit so these are the fundamental intervals and um when converting from celsius to kelvin there's a rather simple method for doing that to get a value in kelvin simply take the value in celsius and add 273 to it it's that simple but if you're going from celsius to kelvin or rather from kelvin to celsius take the value in kelvin and subtract 273 so as you can see this one is very very simple and um we could also generate a formula for doing that in fahrenheit but um while generating the formula we shall have to observe the general method for converting any temperature scale now if you have any temperature scale to convert what do you simply do all you have to do is draw something like this doesn't have to be very big any size will do now at the top we shall place the upper fist points and at the bottom the lower fist points so say i'm converting from celsius to fahrenheit at the top here upper must be 100 and lower must be zero while in fahrenheit upper must be 212 and the lower must be 32. so say i want to convert any value c to a corresponding value in fahrenheit f and now we apply a simple method known as interpolation what you simply do is we shall be working on the fact that these things should have fixed differences or fixed increase therefore taking your middle value c minus the bottom value zero over the top hundred minus zero equals and now you repeat the exact same thing on the right side middle value again f minus bottom 32 all over top 212 minus 32 c minus zero is c 100 minus zero is 100 and this is f minus 32 and 212 minus 32 is 180. So from here, simple arithmetic, 0 can cancel 0. 2 into 10 is 5. 2 into 18 is 9. Cross multiply. 9c equals 5 into f minus 32. And if you want to get this over 9, over 9. So the value in Celsius can be gotten by saying, 5 over 9 times f minus 32. And so you can see, this gives me my value in Celsius when I know my value in Fahrenheit. Now, some of you might already be saying, how can I memorize formulas for each and every single one? Well, it will please you to know, you only have to memorize formulas when you are dealing with Kelvin, because that formula is quite simple, pure addition. For every other question, you do not memorize the formulas, rather you go through certain steps like we just went through and solve them individually always top bottom then you simply say middle minus bottom over top minus bottom and if this conversion method is understood it is time for us to take a few examples which of course we shall be doing using the aid of our o3 schools jump app question search so if i also go to my o3 schools jump app and um yeah i've seen a question already the year 1995 question 17. this question says a temperature scale i've got questions now 
a temperature scale has a lower fixed point of 40 which means if i draw this right now the lower fixed point is 40 millimeters and upper fixed point of 200 millimeters okay what is the reading on this scale when a thermometer reads 60 degrees celsius because they're asking me about something degrees celsius that must mean that the next thing i'll draw is 100 degrees celsius and zero degrees celsius so what is the reading when this thermometer is showing me 60 degrees celsius i can call this x then using the method that's outlined previously middle x minus bottom 40 e over top 200 minus bottom also 40 equals middle 60 minus bottom 0 over top 100 minus bottom 0 so x minus 40 over 200 minus 40 is going to be 160 plus 2 60 minus 0 is 60 100 minus 0 100 so let's see what can cancel out 0 takes care of 0 0 takes care of 0 so if I cross multiply x minus 40 times 1 obviously is x minus 40 then 16 times 6 will be 96 so x equals to 40 plus 96 which gives 136 millimeters and obviously that is my option d as you can see these questions are quite simple just note the upper and the lower fist points okay try another we shall go to the year 1997 and we shall look at question number 16. the year is 97 the question is 16. the length of mercury trade when it is at zero degrees celsius 100 degrees celsius and an unknown temperature automatically i know that my first column must be in celsius 100 zero and unknown temperature theta is 25 millimeters 2 to 5 millimeters and 175 millimeters respectively so if i draw my second i know that respectively implies that the first thing they told me goes with the first in the next sentence second second third third implying that zero is 25 millimeters and um, 100 is 2 to 5 millimeters and um, last but not least theta is 175 millimeters implying that this will be theta minus 0 over 100 minus 0 equals to 175 minus 25 over 2 to 5 minus 25 so theta minus 0 is theta 100 minus 0 is 100. 175 minus 25 is 150. 25 minus 25 is 200. Both my zeros cancel these two zeros. Theta equals to 150 over 2, which will be 75 degrees Celsius. And that is my option C. So you see, quite simple. Keep the basic idea in mind draw your lines and you pretty much have your answer trying one more this is from 1995 and this is question number 20. a well lagged bar do not say the way it's deceive you a lagged bar simply indicates a well insulated bar now this bar has a length of 100 centimeters and the ends are maintained at 100 degrees celsius and 40 degrees celsius so if i'm to draw my columns now my first might say okay how do we do this one i have a bar 100 cm if i call you 100 cm of the bar yeah it's 0 cm so it has to start somewhere and end at 100. now i'm told that these ends are maintained at 100 degrees celsius and 40 degrees celsius those are my ends there's no specify which end should be which so I could decide to put my 100 degrees Celsius up here and my 40 degrees Celsius 
down there switching it around and to achieve the same results what is the temperature 60 cm away from the hotter end temperature at a point 60 cm from the hotter end now based on my current arrangement my hotter end 100 that's my 100 cm mark now i'm meant to go 60 cm away from that 100 cm mark so if i'm to go 60 away from 100 that will be going it down here 100 minus 60 which is 40 cm which means that truly i am at my 40 cm mark and i want to find the temperature which we shall call x so from here the same method as we've been using since my middle 40 minus bottom 0 over top 100 minus bottom 0 middle x minus bottom 40 over 100 minus bottom 40 bottom minus 0 is 40 100 minus 0 is 100 x minus 40 over 100 minus 40 is also 60 so let's see 0 cancels 0 0 also cancels 0 therefore x minus 40 times 1 x minus 40 4 times 6 is 24 so x will be 24 plus 40 indicating that x is 64 degrees celsius so temperature there is 64 which is option c so you see these are quite rudimentary um there's a simple one which will take us up to two lines so i'll simply just do it right here we have been told the melting point of naphthalene is 78 degrees celsius what's the temperature in kelvin like we said, when we go from Kelvin to Celsius, something becomes very, very simple. Simply add 273. So, 273 plus 78, present to your calculator, you should be getting 351 Kelvin. And so you see, these steps are quite, quite simple. Uh, okay, now we have a theoretical question to answer. This one says, the thermometer whose reading is indicated by a change in color of its thermometric property. By the way, this is 2009, question 18. Thermometer whose reading is indicated by change in color. Well, the options are dimetallic strip thermometer, thermocouple, platinum resistance thermometer, and optical pyrometer. Now, even without any knowledge, we are seeing there's a change in color. You observe a change in color with your eyes. And all does have to do with optics. So instantly, I should be able to tell my answer is the optical parameter. See? So these are just very, very simple. Uh, we also have um, the thermometric property of a thermocouple is the change in what? We looked at this at the beginning of the class. Um, change in what for thermocouple? Equivalent resistance. We said no. Resistance has to do with the resistance thermometer, obviously. Well, there's electromotive force sign. Well, yes, that is my answer. We should also analyze the other options. Color, like we just learned, works for your optical parameter. Why pressure is for your gas thermometer? So my answer is electromotive force option B. And this was from 2008, question number 19. You see, there are many other questions you shall find on this topic. When you try to solve them, you shall use the exact same method as we've been using so far, and you shall get your answers. Like, um, okay, let's try some more theoretical questions, shall we? Water is a poor thermometric liquid because it what? Again, we've answered this during our explanation. This one is from 2002, question 23. Why is water a poor thermometric liquid? Option A, they said it is opaque. We know water is not opaque. Water is transparent we can see through water it is a poor conductor while that is not really true it is not even the criteria so they have to think about that it wets glass and you remember that was one of our criteria one of our reasons with water that it wets glass so instantly i know my answer is option c you see and with these i believe we've answered sufficient questions on this topic Thank you very much for listening. Remember, go to the school's jam app is the way to go. So I appreciate you for watching this video. 
you can always come back to this channel to see more videos for different subjects and different topics thank you and see you next time